I was setting up on the corner here getting ready to get down everybody come and get down Hello, hey, everybody. Welcome. My name is Graham. My name is Ashkan. And quick announcement before we get rolling today. Uh, we announced recently, a couple days ago, that we're wrapping up this podcast. So we yeah. have a Hop on the podcast. Weeks. Pony will still strolling <laughs> around, you know. Um, we're, we're approaching a full year of, of releasing an episode every single day and uh, have decided that that's pretty good, you know? <laughs> and um, We have another special episode. You can listen to it. We talk a little bit more about uh, what's going on. But for your intents and purposes here, you should know that for our final episode, we were doing a live recording where you can be involved. Call in on the air. We'll have a chat. You can ask us questions, and we won't even have a chance to ignore them if we don't know what the answers are like we normally do. People have been calling it the Float Tank Podcast Event of the Year. <laughs> so... You'd really be doing yourself a disservice if you yeah. missed out. Yeah, it's going to be big. It's November 29th, 3 p.m. Pacific and, time. Until 5 p.m. Until 5 p.m. Yeah. Pacific time. A couple of those couple of those hours. Yeah. It'll be a blast. Definitely join us. <laughs> yeah. uh, we'll have a lot of fun. We've had just a, an incredible time over the last year doing it. So thanks to everyone for, for listening as well. Yeah. And uh, on to today's question. question. Mm, yeah. It's going to uh, be a tasty one. <laughs> <laughs> spicy. I can just feel, spicy I can feel it. I don't know what it is yet, but it feels it feels spicy. It's what is the tastiest task <laughs> in running a it. lucratively pop? No. So what what is the most time consuming <laughs> task in running a lucratively delicious, profitable <laughs> float tank sinning? That's the most time consuming task in delicious running, running float tank sinning. <laughs> a, a lucratively profitable float tank. So like if, if a float tank Above, just if it's making one dollar a year. It. That's not what we were talking about. Okay, we're talking that's, about just, little, yeah, that's just yeah. moderately. Not, one dollar is moderate. <laughs> oh, man, they're doing pretty good. A dollar. They're moderately good. I can't, I can't even get things in the well, dollar tree for that Someone's out three bucks a year. Uh, <laughs> it's three times as moderate. <clears throat> um, yeah. So. Uh, Probably recording your daily podcast <laughs> is really time consuming. I mean. Well, so to me, it's, it's interesting because it depends a little bit on whose time you're talking about yeah like are we talking about like administrative tasks or running like running the center because tasks? i mean just in terms of running a float tank center like it takes us more man hours than e- either one of us has individually in a day to run our float tank center right we like <laughs> well, staff two here. people at a time if if they are in fact running a lucratively profitable float center then probably they have enough money to take themselves out of and the staff is and running the staff the is running things right so logically we can we can go to more of a like higher level yeah what does it take to run a float center so sort of thing that's when you realize that like maintaining like the the emergency stuff on your float tanks and pumps and things that are going wrong yeah. and systems dropping down and and managing employees and making sure that people are showing up and and filling in for sick days and stuff like that kind of becomes very time consuming. Yeah. I should say the I mean the answer if you're running your float center is cleaning. Cleaning is just absolutely most of what cleaning and day-to-day. repairs. Yeah, just uh, emerge like, like things going down, yeah. walls crumbling, mostly float tank pumps not working. Stuff, cleaning. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's a big one. If you're working day to day in the center, yep. like our our staff is even while people are floating, they they still have a ton of cleaning stuff to do. Yeah. They're not just sitting yeah. around doing nothing. So there's plenty of plenty of cleaning to go around. Um, but uh, and yeah, it, on the back end. Yeah, and and if you're like us too, then. You've also trained up your staff to, or your managers to actually manage the other staff members who you have <laughs> and to deal with emergencies that come up if your pumps are breaking down. You yeah. know, our, our staff at this point is the ones who are calling the, the float tank manufacturers yeah. to get things back up online and, yeah, and calling I've fiberglass repair people to yeah, figure out how, what the quote is on getting that yeah. bubble replaced. And I've outsourced my job to the Philippines, so I'm not even doing He's not even recording this anymore. podcast no. right now. We just made a soundboard. This, <laughs> is, not, this is not me. Yeah. <laughs> that's not what you this is not Ashcon, is, is what you should right. say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Good one. <laughs> um 
so I mean, after that, I think like so after the people, then in emergencies. I, emergencies oh, yeah. really like it's where, like one of the things about running a float center is that there's your entire, always emergencies. <laughs> well, it's, it's and it's because your entire business is reservation based. So as soon as something goes wrong, it's like it's immediately an emergency. You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah. Like if something goes wrong, and almost always if something goes wrong with the float tank, it means you can't run floats in it. Yeah. Like there's so many pieces of a float tank that just them breaking means that's it, game over. Like you can't run any floats anymore, and that means it's an emergency right now. Like in 15 minutes, someone is expecting to show up to to float in that float tank so that's that's why i think it can become a really uh time consuming and stressful part of running a float center it's just because it like it it can happen spontaneously and as soon as it happens you kind of have to drop everything and, and go deal with it yeah yeah for sure um and i feel like they happen more so in our business than in other <laughs> in other businesses you know <laughs> Uh, yeah, trying to get to absolute nothing is such a challenging thing that, yeah, if they, like, you have a small clicking noise and you're like, this is an emergency. We can't run floats. The tiny clicking yeah. is too loud, you know? <laughs> uh, there's just very, yeah, very few other businesses that have that <laughs> level of meticulousness. Uh, I, yeah, I think after that, the big category is marketing. For sure. You know, and that's something that we still spend uh, a decent chunk of time on. But, you know, uh, Facebook ads don't plan themselves, as they say. <laughs> the old saying goes. And it's just hot. like so much of good marketing involves hustle. Yeah, and a lot of community outreach. You know, finding different groups who would benefit from floats, giving out free ones. Um, yeah, just making kind of cool alliances with other businesses around town, setting up barters. You know, just like getting yourself known and, and building brand awareness in your yeah. community is no small feat. It has to be managed. If you're doing things like that, you can't just come up with a good idea and expect it to implement yeah. itself like it like a lot just goes into taking an idea and, and actually dealing with it existing in the world and keeping track of what's going on and having to create the materials for it and having to make sure that people are actually responding correctly and having to alter your plans as you start to get real world feedback and all that sort of stuff is what goes into what goes into marketing yeah and then yeah tracking the results um adjusting your marketing campaigns to get better ones and if you want to start testing things and doing A-B testing, which we'll link over into the show notes, another episode where we talk about that, all of a sudden, for every marketing campaign, you have to design two of something <laughs> so you can actually <laughs> test them against each other. So, yeah, it can get, it can get really time-consuming. Um, I mean, to me, that's, I mean, this isn't very different, actually, in a float tank center, maybe minus the emergencies, than a lot of other businesses. It's just like the day-to-day -day being on the ground, being in the shop, dealing with customers, cleaning, just all the activities needed to keep a shop going is the most time-consuming, and that's why... It's what we outsource as business owners, you know, early on. And from there, it, it builds into, yeah, managing emergencies and things that are going wrong so your tanks can stay up and running and taking appointments. And from there, it goes into, into marketing and actually just making sure that the, the marketing side of things is functioning as well as your, your kind of physical retail shop. And fueling the fire. Like, if you are, in fact, a lucratively profitable, delicious <laughs> float center, like, that's a great time <laughs> to really be still doing a lot of marketing. Like, you have yeah. a really good ball rolling. You have a lot of momentum. Like, ride that now and keep it going rather than waiting for things to, to peter off and then having to try to, like, play catch up. Because a lot of times, marketing stuff can take a little bit to really fully kick in you know yeah yeah absolutely and yeah uh, it's just like a, a giant boulder or a car or something you know when when your momentum stops is the hardest time to get it started again like keeping something going is is pretty much the easiest way to to ride it yeah um i think that's it i, I feel good about this answer yeah i feel i feel happy yeah i think the audience will feel great <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't feel great you just go over to floatanksolutions.com Slash podcast. And uh, you can write your complaints in to us there. And... Yeah, but it'll say questions. So put your <laughs> put your complaint in the form of a question. Yeah. And we'll we'll, we'll answer it. Out here. <laughs> All right. Thanks everyone. Bye.